Oh, right, here we are, week 173. Let me just feed the fish quick before I settle in. Right. So you then feasting? Yeah, you can. So, right, what happened this week? So the first thing I want to talk about is these little P1. I don't know it says P1 on the front and it says X1 on the back. So that is a little Kamala pump, single head. So I have two of these. I used to use them probably five years ago when I ran my coral quarantine tank, which is a little Red Sea Nano. And I used to use the, R, the ATI Essentials. And I got two of these. And you get two bottles of ATI Essentials, so they were perfect. Small footprint. The only issue I've had with them is the software seems to have a blip every now and then. So even when I run the ATI, I noticed that they were meant to dose the equal amounts of each bottle. And they always went out of sequence. One of them the software would just always have a blip and stop running or it would dose weird amounts and that's the reason I stopped using them to be fair and then I put them in the cupboard and then four years later I'm looking to dose my trace elements and I dig these out and go oh perfect because I'm only dosing 30 mil a day I don't want to spend 400 pounds on a dose dose to dose 30 mil a day really so I've set these up and they have been running probably a year maybe maybe longer now i haven't had any i mean i've checked them also i haven't had any issues with them these the software is just weird because you set up a plan and it will run for weeks and weeks sometimes months and then all of a sudden you'll check the app and the plan won't be there and it'll be a load of random plans instead so i mean i run a very simple plan so each pump doses 15 mil a day one in the morning one in the afternoon and the four doses because it's the a and the k elements i don't want to mix them i don't want to dose them close together so they're just spread out throughout the day really i mean it's a very simple plan so this pump is set to dose daily two lots of 15 mil say at nine in the morning and two in the afternoon for example and anyway so i check them weekly i check the plans weekly because i'm not a fan of the software i'm not a fan of bluetooth either because i have to be next to the pump which is just a pain so if i'm in the house i have to come out and do it um and if i looked about two or three weeks ago i checked the plan and we log in and it just gave probably 30 just random plans of random amounts of dosing every one mil seven mil 20 mil 15 and i was going what is all that i never put that in there so I came out the app and went back in, and when I went back in, it was just the plan that I set and all of that other stuff that was gone. And I was like, well, that's just weird. So I checked these weekly. I just log into the app and check that they seem to be running and doing what I want them to do. And then I don't know why, but I decided to actually check the dosing container. And I noticed, because I buy the five litre containers of the A and the K, Tropic Marin Trace, and the A was empty and the K was half full. So I know I checked them probably two months ago, maybe. It's very hard to remember. But I obviously they should both be at the same amount. They should both have two and a half litres in there. So I don't know whether one of the pumps is not dosing or the other pump is overdosing, which I think is looking at the state of the corals i think it's probably dumped in two and a half liters more of the trace a than it has the trace k and i don't actually know what time period it's done that over but if you look back in the videos because i was trying to think there was a time obviously when i came back from holiday in june july when that was the tank had a blip and that's the tosa it stripped which is fair enough and then it started to grow back and then it stopped and the last couple of weeks it started to proceed again i kept thinking it was taking a long time to grow back and now i've actually paid 
closer attention to it, it's actually the seedlings. And then I've got another couple of corals that I've been looking at just the last week. And you just think they look very unhappy. Uh, the colours drained out of them. Some of them have got some RTN on them. And it's just... So it kind of makes sense that if I've dumped in two and a half litres of trace elements in the tank over the course of... I don't think he's done it in a day, but he's probably done it maybe over a week or so. He's done it over a much quicker period of time than he should have done it anyway. So it's going to definitely have a detrimental effect on the tank. I'm just not quite sure how severe it will be. So as per usual, I will be doing a bigger water change today to try and get that balance back a little bit. Obviously, I won't be using these to dose my trace elements again. So I am going to set up DOS dose to dose 30 ml a day of each of the A and K so that I just know the right amounts going in. I like DOS dose. They just, I've had these for years. They've never let me down. I can log in on the Wi-Fi and see what they're doing. I can have the little tile that tells me how much is in there and how much has been used. And I've just got a lot more faith than I have in these, to be fair. So that's one of the things I'll be doing today. I'll be changing these over for the dose. And just to facilitate that, I bought a new set of dosing lines with the little clamps and stuff so I can make it reasonably neat for me anyway. And like I say, I'm going to do an ICP because I just want to see where those trace elements are. So I will send it off tomorrow. Hopefully that will come back by Thursday or Friday and give me some idea of how bad the trace elements are out. And I've also bought another litre of A because I've got no A left. Um, I probably don't need to dose these at the moment. I'll wait till the um, ICP comes back to see where we are. Yeah, so that's that. Just Yeah, it's just one of those things, isn't it? I just, I didn't physically look at the containers to check that they were going down equally. So that's something, just one of those simple things that I need to check more regularly, really. And then the other thing I noticed probably two or three days ago as well, with Monday, I noticed Saturday actually, that my alkalinity was dropping throughout the day. So, you know, I dose calc, I dose calc also, and I use a calcium reactor sitting behind me. And the calcium reactor runs, I think it's something like 10 hours. It comes on in the morning. It comes on with pretty much the same schedule as the lights, really. I think it comes on about eight in the morning, goes off maybe five in the afternoon, six in the afternoon. Then it maintains the calc throughout the day, really. So I noticed it was dropping, which obviously tells me something is not going in the tank. And then when I checked the calcium reactors fed with a Kamala stepper motor, which sits on top of the sump downstairs and the intake line was just clogged up with detritus and stuff, really. So I just squeezed it all out and set it back, and it looks like it's doing okay now. That's another reason I need to expand that sump because it's so constricted in there now. It's just everything in there is just awkward and it's starting to annoy me. So when I come back from my holiday, I need to get that sorted, really. So, yeah, I think that's it for this tank. So the corals are not happy, then you wouldn't expect them to be, really. I suppose in the grand scheme of things, I'm lucky they just. <laughs> did not die, I guess. I've done two and a half litres of um, some quite nasty metals in there. Yeah, but some of them don't. I mean, some of them look absolutely oblivious to the fact that the water quality is probably not very good. Uh, and some of them do not look happy. So, obviously, that's a toaster. I'm hoping if I get those elements back in the right ratios, that will start to grow back. And I don't know what coral that is down there, but. That's the, that's the one I've been looking at the last few days, Going, That is really, it's lost a lot of colour, really paled out. Uh, and it looks like it's going to get some RTN slowly creeping up from the bottom. So it's quite possible I may lose that piece. Bizarrely, there's another piece of it over there which looks better. So I don't know. So, yeah, so that's where we are with this tank. I've got a 
bunch of people coming to look at this tank on Saturday as well. So it's absolute perfect timing to dump two and a half litres of trace elements in your tank and make everything look a little bit ropey. So they would all be coming and scrutinise the tank on Saturday. As every reefer knows, really enjoyable when that happens and you get people to look at your tank. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to Sunday. Right, what have we done with this tank? This tank, Ron up in Eden Corals. Up in Eden Corals, yeah, he's in Glasgow, that's it. True, I think he is. He had a set of pipes from an old Red Sea Reaper 350, and we did a video call, and he showed me this, and he said, do you think that would be any good? And I think it looks perfect. Because that size fitting, I think, is pretty universal on a lot of the Red Sea tanks, just despite the size. Yeah, I mean, the only difference is that that 90 is 90 degrees out there. Well, perfect. I want it going down, really. It should go down like that. But I'll just elbow it off there. It's going to come out. It's going to make a slight bit of difference in the tank. But it's not a problem. I've checked that. It fits absolutely perfectly. So this morning while i was buying my icp and my dosing lines i picked up a 32 mil gate valve very handy having them just just walk the dog down the shop got everything i needed it's perfect very spoiled really having a fish shop literally down the road yeah so i think that's it really so i will hopefully get that tank plums i've got to check and see what i've got in terms of 32 mil pipe and fittings it's like everything the reason the reason i haven't done it is because all the plumbing is right at the back of my shed of stuff so i've got to spend probably an hour just moving all i've got nine tanks in there as well and just it's just skimmers there's so much stuff in there and unfortunately all the plumbing is right at the end so i <laughs> I'll be putting it off to look, but I will get around to it. I mean, ideally, I'd like to get that. I mean, it's a very simple thing. I've just got to plumb the gate valve onto some 32 mil pipe. I mean, it's, it's probably like a 20 minute job, to be honest. But it just takes me over an hour to get to the pipe. Um, and then I guarantee I'll be one fitting short or something anyway. But, so the plan is to try and get this tank plumbed and wet and kind of running before I go away which I think is about four weeks time and then I can just go away and leave it I don't need a light on or anything I've got some biomedia down in the sump which I can just put in that sump and I'll just I'm going to put live never remember the name of it I think is it carob sea live sand what there's there's a manufacturer out there that just literally digs live sand puts it in the bag, seals it, sends it out. Um, I used it when I set this tank up in the satellite just to get some good bacteria in it. So I will do the same. It's going to take and take one bag, isn't it, really? And I can just leave it running then. And then I can start thinking about building the cabinet. I pointed down there because that's the, the black tea slot that I bought to enclose this cabinet so there's no extraneous light in there and i need to work out an amount i mean ideally i'd like to just drill a hole through the side of the cabinet so i can get all the cable in out because i'd like it to put the cabling up here really on that wall outside of the cabinet because they've all got blinky lights on and i don't want them anywhere inside of it really so anyway so there's plenty to do on that yes yeah, so i think that's it for this week so hopefully I won't lose too much. I think I'll probably lose that coral because it, it looks very pale and very unhappy. And I'm assuming it's the trace elements. I, I don't know. I'm assuming it is. Most of the other stuff look reasonably happy. That, I still don't know what that is. But that's got quite a chunk of RT on it as well so I will probably just bin that I think I'll just take it out today I might chop some off but I've got another piece there's two bits one part RTN in completely from the bottom up 
the other part looks happy as perfect. They're right next to each other. So, but I think I'll just take it out. It grows really quick anyway, so I'm sure the other part will grow back. And Ron from Eden Corals, who sent me this. Sorry, that's a dog. Looks like it's raining out there. What's I saying? Yeah, Ron from Eden Corals is going to send me a box of corals. Uh, he's also sending me a dose for this tank because I stole the one from that tank down there, which will now be dosing my trace elements. And he's, yeah, he's sending me a box of corals. I think I'm going to actually get to pick these ones if I manage to make the video call with him. And he's putting a data logger in it as well, so we can look at the temperature profile because it's coming from Scotland, so it's a decent way. And he wants to know the temperature profile of the box when he sends them to see how low, how uh, high the temperature gets, how big the swings are. So he's got a logger in the box. So that'd be quite interesting to see. So that should be coming, I think, Thursday or Friday. So I will <laughs> probably make a video of the unboxing i'm laughing because <laughs> because because of what he labels the corals but i will deal with that when they come yeah i think that's it so i think that is it for this week so a little bit of drama just let down by equipment really and i mean at the end of the day it's down to me to check the dosing containers are doing what you want them to do aren't they so I should have looked at them. Trouble is, it's, it's always the way, isn't it? The one I can see, because those containers, their five litre containers, have got a little clear stripe down the front, so you can see the liquid level in them. So I thought, oh, they're perfect. So I've actually converted the lids. I've done a video on that before. It's on one of my videos. And so I've made them into proper con dosing containers. But the, the one that was obviously emptied, I've put stuff in front of it so I can't see the actual liquid level inside it. So that's why it went. It's only when I went, I picked it up to look and I went, oh my God, it's empty. Um, and that was yesterday, I think. Yeah, so that's just, that's just roofing, isn't it? Right, so that is it, guys. That is all I've got to say other than Aqua H, a big brief meet is three weeks away i think so i'm looking forward to that it's about a three hour drive for me i think it's north from here for me but three i think it opens at 10 so i mean i won't get there bang at 10 i'll you know just probably do there at eight get it for 11 ish or something it's on for two days i'm quite looking forward to actually one because obviously you get to meet the people that you chat to online meet them in person which is always good and it's also got reptiles and amphibians as well as the reef side of it and i used to keep a lot of reptiles and amphibians mainly reptiles to be honest but i've had a lot of monitors and boas and pythons and rat snakes corn snakes all that type of stuff when i was younger so i haven't looked at any of that stuff for years so i'm quite looking forward to that side of it as well um so that's coming up, like I said, on the, I was going to say a date, but I don't want to commit because I can't actually remember the day. It's around 20 something, whatever that weekend is of the 20th. And then also announced this week is AAC are doing another Coral Freaks, which they did years ago. Now, um, I can't remember off the top of my head what year they did it. 2018 maybe i think it was pre-covid i remember um but that was really good so they are doing another one on the 26th of october so that would also be good so that's, that's been good this year then so that is three shows for the uk in a single year so that is quite a rare thing to happen in this country so yeah so it should be good so i'm looking forward to those right i think that is all i've got to say so I will see you next week. Have a good one.